one. And we will forward all items to, oh, there he is. Uh, Mr. Sudil is here. Um, so with uh, that, we will start the Planning, Land Use, and Management Committee. Uh, we have item number seven first, Mr. Legrand. Good afternoon, Councilman. Mike Legrand for the record. Um, just one item to report. Today I had the opportunity to speak at the Hollywood Economic Development Summit um, that focused on economic development opportunities in Hollywood, and there was a number of projects that have been through this committee that were highlighted, um, that, and also projects that will be coming before you in the near future. Um, it's a great opportunity to kind of highlight all the positive things happening in Hollywood in the 13th District, and I was really excited to be a part of that, and we had a great turnout, about 250 people from the real estate and development industry, um, as well as nonprofit sector, um, speaking about the future of Hollywood and how to move it forward. So it was a great opportunity to uh, present our new zoning code and some of the things we're working on in the department and many of the projects, again, that have been through this committee and you spent countless hours taking testimony on and influencing. So it was a great event and just wanted to highlight that for you. That'll conclude my report. Right, thank you. And um, in light of the court's uh, findings of error in our Hollywood community plan. Uh, was that a topic of conversation? How does that affect the future economic development of Hollywood? I guess that was a main yeah, thrust, right? Yeah, it was, it was, we had that conversation. And being that our 2008 plan is in full force and effect, um, projects are still moving forward. Um, and we're issuing permits daily um, on economic development opportunities in Hollywood. We are going back and um, making many of the fixes that the court suggested, even though we may not professionally agree with them. Um, we're definitely um, going forward and making those amendments and changes, and we'll be bringing those documents um, and a, a revised plan back before you um, next year. All righty. Thank you. So let's go on to, uh, why don't we do this? We'll do item number two, five and three. Three on consent. Oh, we have a card on five as well, right? So let's do two and three on consent. Two and three on consent. The concurrence, Mr. Sedil. So ordered. Uh, so now we're on item number four. Can you read that into the record, please? Sure. Um, item four, Councilman, is a sound change ordinance for a 15-unit apartment building in uh, Reseda. Welcome. Uh, we have two cards here. One is uh, Athena Novak. Item four and five are related, so we're taking item four, and then we'll take item number five afterwards. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Um, what we have here is we have a zone change from R1 to conform to the general plan to R RAS 3. The general plan does call for community commercial, but to keep in the, um, I guess, the the stride of the neighborhood we have um, moved forward to put a multi-residential family apartment community there and if you have any questions I'd be more than happy to answer them great thank you no questions at this time um, no questions at this time thank you Jim McQuiston Jim, a question. You all have my statement. I don't really have anything more to add except that we really got to get these plans in shape because uh, sooner or later we're all going to get strangled by them, and it probably is going to be sooner. So uh, uh, this is really a, a heads up on this. Uh, we really have to abide by our general plan, and if we don't like the general plan, we got to change the general plan. 
the interesting thing is that the state legislature has put a stranglehold on us because it says we can only change the general plan four times a year. We can make a thousand changes at that time, every time, but we got to make them simultaneously. And we also got to talk to other cities around us and see how they mesh with the other cities. We don't even check to see how our community plans clash with each other. So we really got to get that uh, going. That's really the uh, main thing that I'm concerned about with this. Great, thank you. So, uh, Ms. Novak, you also have a card of number five, but we're inclined to move both of these items and approve them. I don't know if you want to speak again. Okay, thank you. So we'll move items four and five and approve those items and send them off to council. The concurrence of Mr. Cedillo. Uh, it's so ordered. Item number one. Item one, councilman, is a city attorney prepare ordinance uh, to establish the Warner Center Sign District. Good afternoon, council members. Tom Glick, City of Los Angeles Planning Department. Uh, the sign district, as drafted by the city attorney in April, came before you. But in the spirit of community participation under this project, which is the umbrella it's operated under for the last seven years, uh, the community had some changes to the, uh, the version from April that went before Plum. So um, it was continued so those changes could be incorporated by the city attorney. Those changes were incorporated and it's reflected in the June version of the city attorney's uh, version to council, um, to, to Plum, I'm sorry. The version that came to you in June though was um, from the planning department's point of view substantially different than the sign district that went before commission in uh, November of 2012. So the director has disapproved the sign ordinance under the authority granted it under the charter acting on behalf of commission. Okay. That's good. Thank you. We hear from uh, speakers. Larry Green. Good afternoon, Larry Green with Westfield. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today. I want to thank staff, uh, the council office, and the city attorney for all the work they did listening to the community to incorporate uh, our comments. Uh, Westfield has a few other minor comments uh, that we'd like to have uh, you consider and to incorporate in the document at, that gets transmitted to the city council office or to the city council for review. Uh, you know, they're very minor in nature and go to further the goals of the pedestrian orientation of the sign program. So if you look, uh, it, you know, very simply, uh, what, we've, what we've identified, we need a little bit longer bracket uh, so that we can achieve a look where the sign sits off the wall of the building by about one foot six and hangs in the more the middle of the walkway so that as you're looking down you can actually see the sign instead of having that shoved up hard against the building and, and we hope you'd consider these changes we've submitted something on the record yeah okay so you have those on the record did is there That's anything good. else you wanted to finish you are the uh, affected applicant on this so you could have more time if you wish you know, really, I think we, we've put some things on the record that you can, can look at, and, and you know, we, we want to make sure this process continues uh, and, and gets in front of the council as quickly as possible. We hope that these changes can be picked up in between now and city council. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tricia Robbins Kesson. Oh, I know as Tricia Robbins when she was in my office. Good afternoon, Councilmember Weizar, Councilmember Cedillo. Um, I'm Tricia Robbins-Casson from War Rosenheim and & Associates and uh, the Warner Center Association. And I'm here representing the Warner Center 2035 Plan uh, Community um, Advisory Committee. 
So first, I want to thank the city attorney, Michael Bostrom, and city planning, Tom Glick, and Council District 3, Cesar Diaz, for all of their work on this plan. They've gotten us very far. We're very glad that the city attorney was able to incorporate the changes uh, prepared by the community in the final draft. And we, the CAC has no objections to the changes rep recommended by Westfield, which are largely composed of working man's uh, recommendations that fine-tune the language of the ordinance. So, uh, in conclusion, the CAC is in support of the final sign ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Cesar Diaz from Council District 3. Good afternoon, council members. Thank you for having us here this afternoon. Um, what is before you has been a product of several uh, citizen advisory committee meetings that we've chaired at our office over the last couple months. Um, as you notice, we've been uh, a couple times before you guys in terms of revising the ordinance, and I think we've got into a place where we like it. So on behalf of the council member, we're definitely excited to see this uh, move forward in the process. Uh, we'll continue to work with the community. We appreciate your efforts and everything. Um, we want this to move forward, so thank you again. Thank you. and. Um if I could just ask, I understand that uh, Westfield has uh, some proposed changes, but that in the interim between now and council, you guys will talk to them and see what, you know, speak with them where we're, and the we request of the council office is to move this forward to council, right? We definitely want to move this okay. forward. We could definitely speak to them and, and properly analyze them since they did come in at the last minute. So that's where we, we have to kind of move it forward, but we could definitely continue to talk to them and figure it out from there. Okay, great, thank you. Yes, and Councilman, I just wanted to add from the City Attorney's Office, uh, Michael Bostrom couldn't be here, he has another meeting, but I'm working with him on, oh, he's here? Oh, he's here, Steph, <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted to let you know that we'll have to work on those changes too and amend the ordinance, and um, it'll either have to be waived out of Plum or have to come back to Plum, so we don't know what the changes are yet, we'll have to work with him on that. Council District 3, you wish to uh, move this item forward and then work out those issues as they come back? Or? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, what we'll do uh, um, is uh, approve this item as written and understanding there's probably some other discussions that need to take place, but uh, we will either um, see that come back to Plum or go to Council depending upon what uh, the City Attorney advises on the process. Right. Thank you. Okay. So we'll move this item approved and um, have those further discussions and either see it in council or come back to Plum depending upon what the, count, uh, the um, city attorney advises. But as of now, it's headed to council. That's the direction we're, we're giving. Um, when we approve it, it's scheduled to go to council. So, thank you. Any objections? No objections, so ordered. All right. Item number six. Item six, Councilman, is an appeal by Daniel Gritzman. Uh, he's appealing a, an approval of a track map for a 49-unit condo in CD11. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jose Carlos Romero. I'm the Deputy Advisory Agency who acted on this track. The project is uh, comprised of two entitlements. One is a density bonus uh, with two on-menu incentives for uh, increased floor area and uh, increasing height. Uh, and the approval of the track uh, for condominium, 49 units. Uh, I should say that uh, the density bonus entitlement has only one level of appeal which was uh, presented to the, area, to the City Planning Commission. The City Planning Commission denied the appeal. So before you should be only the track action and the environmental. Uh, and I'm saying this because the, applicant, the appellant uh, indicated that he was appealing the entire action. So I'm not gonna uh, mention the arguments uh, in relation to the uh, density bonus. Uh, The, uh, the appeal basically challenges, in, at the beginning of his appeal, challenges three elements. The construction phase, the alley impacts, or potential impacts, uh, that's his argument, and the circulation issues. And then the, uh, uh, 
the appellant goes on to basically address uh, almost every single element in the environmental assessment or the MND. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, some of those issues. Uh, one of the arguments that the uh, uh, I'll go through the general issues and then I'll focus at the end on the main issues that uh, they have. Uh, the, uh, the appellant indicates so indicated in the appeal that uh, the record was not available to to the public, and that's totally wrong. Actually, I have in my cubicle on my desk the administrative record, and whenever anybody came to see the file, to review the file, that was available for review. There was only one person who came, and, uh, and that's it. No one else came. Uh, Mr. Grisman, the appellant, uh, asked, uh, asked me to send him the, uh, the reports uh, used to uh, prepare the MND. The CEQA uh, requires the city only to make the uh, reports available, to get the administrative record available. So I invited him to come to the office, but uh, he was on a trip and he didn't come to the office at all. He hasn't actually hasn't reviewed the file, to my knowledge. Uh, that was one argument that he had. Uh, he indi indicates that the uh, MND has many uh, deficiencies. Uh, he uh, keeps asking for uh, reports. The city used uh, a few reports. One of them was a, uh, a, a report from the Department of Transportation. Another report that uh, the city used was the geotechnical report. Actually, there was an amendment, um, an amended uh, the geotechnical report. And the Department of Building and Safety reviewed those reports and actually issued uh, an approval with condition. Uh, one of the argument, two of the arguments in relation to the, geote the geotechnical is that uh, the, there was no analysis on liquefaction issues. The letter from the Department of Building and Safety actually spells out that there is no issue with liquefaction, and that is in the administrative record. The geotechnical report also uh, analyzed the earthquake impacts uh, and uh, found uh, no issues other than uh, requiring to comply with certain regulations that building and safety has for, for that purpose. Uh, another issue that uh, the uh, appellant uh, brings up is the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, in the state of California and in, in all local agencies, the, there is no threshold for gas emissions. The, required, the requirement that the local agency has to do is to comply with the building code, with the state of California building code. The city of Los Angeles is compatible and consistent with the state of California uh, building code. So. By, apply, by complying with those regulations in the construction process and the operation process, the city is uh, actually uh, complying with that uh, mitigation measure. Uh, now, uh, if I may go to the main issues that the appellant brings, one is the uh, during the construction process, uh, the uh, appellant argues that it's going to be very difficult to for them to access the you know, the premises, uh, the appellant actually leases a, uh, an office in a building, in a building next door, and uh, they argue that uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to access that, and there's, there's a hazard. The MND has mitigation measures that very clearly, specifically, uh, determines that there ha the alleys has to, the alleys have to be open for access, that there should not be obstruction, uh, during the construction phase, the, uh, there should be a staging in uh, operating uh, uh, vehicles like trucks, uh, and they have to be only probably once, only one at a time. So there will be no obstruction. They argue that the, uh, the existing alley is substandard, and that is true. However, the, uh, the track action includes uh, requirements from the uh, Bureau of Engineering to widen the alleys. Actually, that's an improvement. 
so it will be a lot easier for the people who use the alleys to um, to have access and to exit. Uh, there are two alleys adjoining the subject site. Um, uh, the project site is bounded by you know multiple uses, including two schools. One is a high school, and one is a parochial school. The city has already included in the MND uh, very strict uh, mitigation measures for noise, for dust uh, control, and for asbestos uh, uh, abatement. And uh, basically, that concludes my my. Oh, the, uh, one more point. Uh, today, uh, it was brought to my attention that there was uh, a new uh, uh, participant in this appeal. There was uh, an association, a neighborhood association in the vicinity. There is an attorney who represents them. Uh, the, uh, the track hearing took place almost exactly one year ago, and I, I didn't hear anything from this uh, association. The letter that we received doesn't have any address, only says that uh, this, are, this is a group of people who live in the neighborhood and shop in the neighborhood, so I don't know. It will be very important for the, uh, you know, whoever represents this group to indicate who are they, how many are they, and where do they live, and if they are really impacted and how. Thank you. Thank you. So, first we'll hear from the appellant. Representative Fred Gaines, you have five minutes, sir. Thank you, you very much. You need to use them all, but you have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be heard today. My name is Fred Gaines with the Law Offices of Gaines and Stacy here today on behalf of the appellant, Mr. Grisman, and also the Brentwood Stakeholders uh, Alliance that has joined him uh, in this appeal. We have provided detailed written comments uh, and expert reports, including reports from Pfeffer Consulting and Urban Crossroads that go through a lot of the uh, issues that have been detailed here. This is a project that, that's been done on a mitigated negative declaration. Uh, we believe that a full EIR is required. We've provided uh, detailed expert reports regarding some of the more technical issues related to uh, the geology uh, related to noise. The one that I want to use my short time today to uh, to go over with you is one that I think can be more easily dealt with in this hearing. I've handed out a, a set of photos. I ask you to look at these photos. There's a substandard alley that runs behind uh, commercial buildings along San Vicente and Brentwood. The only access to those buildings, the only vehicular access to those buildings, which include not only commercial buildings but a preschool, uh, you'll see just on the very first picture, and I ask you to flip through them, that the preschool crosses the alley several times a day to get to their playground, which is on the other side of the alley. Um, the alley is substandard in that in certain portions of the alley, it's only basically a little over a half width. So when there's, we have photos in here of a trash collection uh, truck that would normally go down the alley, completely blocks the alley, doesn't allow for any uh, access. So having this condition already in place, what uh, the appellant and the uh, stakeholders have asked for is detailed analysis of how you are going to do this project and how you're going to mitigate that. You've heard that there's a detailed set of mitigations. In fact, there is no mitigation whatsoever in terms of uh, assigning a, a monitor and signing uh, aids to make sure that the people can cross the street, to make sure that vehicles are not uh, blocking this alley, in terms of limitations on uh, hours during the day when you're going to have a lot of people coming in and out of these office buildings uh, and, and coordinating those hours. None of that was done in this case. What you have is uh, We've provided expert testimony, which concluded that since there are no alternative vehicle access points for these buildings, construction activities that alter, limit, constrain, or inhibit access represent a significant impact. If it represents a significant impact, one, the appropriate documentation or sequence in EIR, and two, at the very least, you would uh, demand to have a very detailed traffic mitigation plan uh, and a mon monitoring program so someone monitors that these things are in place uh, and is available to correct uh, issues uh, when, when they come. You have uh, a preschool with children crossing the street and having their activities right there along the alley. You have a medical office with uh, visitors to doctors uh, coming 
to and from all day long as well as just your regular uh, business and uh, activities in these office buildings and you have the, the despite numerous requests there's been it's been denied to come up with the kind of plan that frankly I know that you would require in your district if this project was in your district uh, uh, certainly Mr. Englander, Mr. Steele would do the same thing. You'd say, okay, how are you getting in and out? How are you not uh, doing activities when during the AM, PM peak periods? Are you going to have guards and monitors out there? Are you going to have someone to call to move this? What you've been told is they're going to stage in another area and don't worry, there just won't be any, any traffic on the alley behind San Vicente in Brentwood. If you tried to go to lunch on San Vicente in Brentwood lately, you know what the traffic is like there, let alone when this is the only access to these existing uh, buildings. I don't know why there's been such um, uh, of a, uh, a denial to go forward with that kind of a plan that, I, I, frankly, on much smaller projects we've seen uh, required, whereas here it has not been required. So at this point, we continue to request that because we've shown, uh, we've made the, more than the fair argument that there are going to be significant impacts, uh, as you can see yourself from the photographs, uh, that the appropriate environmental documentation in this case would be an environmental impact report that would go through and impose the necessary conditions to mitigate uh, those impacts. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to be heard today, and uh, thank you. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. So. Now we go to the uh, applicant. We have uh, the applicant and two applicant reps. Um, you can either do it one of two ways. You have a total of five minutes, one speaker. The other speakers have one minute, or you could, the three of you could take the five minutes, whatever you like. So, Want, want to take the three for five minutes? <laughs> I'm negotiating here. Or some, one person could take five minutes and the other two take one minute. That's the rule. So, who wants to take the five minutes? If you even need the five minutes. Uh, hi, hi, Neil Brower of Jeffrey Mangles, Butler and Mitchell for Montana Bundy LLC. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, essentially, the letters before you, the new letters from uh, the appellants, um, rehash issues that they've, uh, that they've been raising in their letters and that essentially conveniently ignore portions of the MND, misread others, and misread portions of the city code. Now, there are really only a couple of new issues uh, that, their, uh, that their representative raised, and I just want to briefly cover those. Uh, the first is that the, issue, that the issue of the substandard alley and the fact that this is you know, somehow a significant impact. Um, the fact that it's a substandard alley is an existing condition. Uh, an existing condition is not something that creates an impact under CEQA. In fact, the project itself is being required to widen the alley to a standard width and actually improve access both operationally and, and during the construction phase as well. Secondly, there's already a condition uh, of approval of the project that requires us to keep the, uh, the alley open and to maintain access to the building, and so that just simply has to occur. Uh, the second issue, uh, geotechnical, uh, as, uh, <clears throat> as Mr. Romero-Navarro pointed out, uh, there was already an approved soils report and the Department of Building and Safety has already determined that liquefaction is not an issue at the project site. And as far as noise mitigation, uh, the MND includes an analysis and it also includes mitigation measures that include sound walls, you know, noise barriers, those sorts of things, to ensure that the noise levels, excuse me, don't exceed uh, don't exceed allowable levels at the uh, at the two schools. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben Resnick. I have, uh, Mr. Uh, Simon Karendian. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, thank you for your time. My name is Simon Karendian, and uh, I represent the ownership of the LLC. Uh, just want to mention that from the beginning of the process, I approached the. Uh, Brentwood, uh, South Brentwood Neighborhood Association, had several meetings with them, listened to them, changed our floor plans according to their uh, requirements, and the alley was actually one of the first things that they brought up. We eliminated all parking access, all driveways from the alley to make sure that uh, the future project have absolutely no traffic uh, whatsoever, and all existing parking space, about 30 parking space will be eliminated from the alley. Secondly, I uh, worked with the tenants one by one, you know, discussed based on their personal cases, 
paid much more than the required relocation assistance to make sure that we mitigate their hardship. And um, lastly, we have been in contact with council's office and listened and offered also to minimize our usage of the alley. I don't think we will naturally have much use of the alley during construction. Most of the uh, staging will happen from uh, Montana. And uh, our use of the uh, alley would be restricted to, to minimum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ben Resnick. Ben Resnick with Jeffrey Mangles Butler and Mitchell, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, we do a lot of affordable housing projects throughout the city. It's hard enough to get many of these projects approved. Uh, but I didn't expect that a, a, a development firm that does some of these projects would be so concerned about its office space as to create all these hurdles in front of what is a meritorious, unique, affordable housing project in Brentwood, where this is for sale with very low income units being provided. All the issues raised about the, the, the that, that you've seen as, as Jose Carlos, who's done such a terrific job on this project, indicated, are issues that have been dealt with, looked at, and mitigated. Um, the appellant, Regent Properties, um, lost at the CPC unanimously. The Planning Commission just did not find any merit. This new entity that surfaced a few days ago, um, we don't know who, who they are, what they are, but they describe themselves as people who shop and recreate in Brentwood and who live. Um, the reality is that we strongly urge you to just support this project um, and, uh, and move it forward, please. Um, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Now, um, Trisha Keene from Council District 11. Good afternoon. Trisha Keene, Director of Planning for Councilman Mike Bonin. Um, as you may know, our office supported this project when it was appealed to the City Planning Commission. The applicant worked very diligently to address the concerns that he heard from the community and in particular from the tenants of the building who will be displaced as part of this project. Uh, after a lot of hard work, the applicants and the tenants came to a consensus that addressed the tenants' concerns and we recognize that the applicant did go beyond, well beyond the minimum requirements related to relocation assistance because he knew it was the right thing to do. We would encourage all applicants to follow his lead on that point and make sure that they have projects that when they have projects that require tenant relocation, they work hard to make sure the tenants are taken care of. We also understand that the applicant has been working to address other concerns that were raised throughout the process, including concerns about the traffic impacts, particularly the impacts on the alley. Um, and as the applicant mentioned, he's agreed to minimize construction activity in the alley to address these concerns. Um, given all of this, we continue to have no objections to the project and therefore respectfully request that you deny the appeal. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I'd like to have the planning staff come up. And one of the issues on this is whether there was a traffic study. And can you tell me what is a threshold uh, with respect to the number of trip generations that would require? I mean, how do we determine the, if we need uh, a traffic study? There the, was no traffic study, correct? Yes. Well, every single project requires an assessment in traffic depending on what is being built, and in this case, what is being demolished. Uh, there is right now, uh, I think, 32 existing units that will be demolished. Those are credited to the development. So the new dwelling units will be 17. Based on the uh, factors that the, the Department of Transportation has, the net increase in uh, traffic, in traffic uh, trip, in vehicle trips, will be 8.8. So that's way below the threshold. The threshold is um, around 49 uh, trips, 48 trips. So we have a very low threshold. Uh, uh, usually we receive the uh, reports from DOT, and, and in this case, uh, you know, it delayed. So I once, uh, but, but as, a, as a decision maker, I need to make sure that everything is in compliance with thresholds and regulations. I requested DOT to actually send me a written report, and the written report indicates that there is no need for a traffic study. That's what, uh, you know, that they stated. What, what's the standard? When do you determine whether we do need a traffic study or we do not need a traffic study? When the number of uh, trips genera generated will be 48. 
Okay. And what's the, what does this case tell us? This case tells us that the new uh, vehicle trips will be 8.8. Uh, which is? Which is way below the threshold. Way below the, um, yeah. okay. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Any questions, Mr. Okay. Thank you. So we will um, move to uh, deny the appeal and uh, move this item forward unless uh, there's an objection from Mr. Cedillo. So move to deny this appeal. So ordered. Next uh, item. Uh, public comment, Council. Public comment. No public comment. Um, and item number six, do we have a date for Council yet? Um, it's approximately two weeks, but uh, I'll update the council file management system. It's approximately two weeks, but we don't have a date certain yet, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we'll move this item. Uh, we, 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 we have moved item six, and there's no public comment. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, sir.